one of the most annoying things that you can get on SOLIDWORKS is undefined drawings. Now, as you can see, we have a model here. Looks like a good model, no real issue with it. But when you look down, editing part, doesn't say anything else, you're happy enough. Next minute you click down and you see this. This little minus sign declares this drawing is underdefined. What's underdefined mean? So underdefined means it is not defined in space. It is a line that can move. If we go into our drawing, we can see that we have a 180, a 126, a 104, 26, 26. We have a movable line. This line can move for multiple reasons. If you made another modification to the part, it might push or pull that line. And without that line being defined, it can easily upset your drawings. So what we need to do is we need to define it. Just need to put in a measurement. If we have 70 millimeters of measurement, it says fully defined down here, click back, and that little tick goes away. Here's another one, jump in. You see that the blue line is the underdefined piece. It says underdefined here. Our sketch is a little tick. If we go back, click on our line, drag it out, it says 10.026. So if I wanted that to be a 10 mil section, or 10.026 won't work because it's bad tolerance. So now we can see it's a 10 mil. If we jump back, we can also see that it has a linear relation from one to the other, leaving both of them defined. Going down again. We still have nothing to say that our sketches are underdefined, but when we look back into our sketches, you can see that there's lots of them underdefined. Now, people send these for all manner of reasons. Sometimes you do need things underdefined, but the majority of the time, you don't. That was a simple measurement put in. That is our underdefined sketches, all taken care of. Our object is now fully defined. They were just a few quick examples of how you would define lines in an object like this, but what if we were to go and say we're starting a new sketch. Now there's a technique to defining things in SOLIDWORKS. If we say we want a point, for instance, we just drop a point and we need to define that point. So we want to turn that blue point black to tell us it's fully defined. Click on the point, click back to origin, and we go with a horizontal measurement. Click on the point, click back to origin, and we go on a vertical measurement. And down here, it changes from underdefined to fully defined, and our point turns black. Okay, that's well and easy, but if you had a large drawing with a lot of complicated dimensions coming out or a lot of angles, all you need to do is find your origin. So you take your origin point, you draw a construction line up, make sure that construction line is vertical, one horizontal, make sure it's horizontal. You can even just to see it says fully defined even though they're construction lines. If you want, you can even put a length on those construction lines and that makes them fully defined. Any point that you need to define in space can now be defined from horizontal measurement. See, we're still set under defined. And a vertical measurement, fully defined. That's how easy this is. Now, lots of people don't define any measurements or don't define their line. If you want to become a skilled SOLIDWORKS user and reduce the risk associated with designing on SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD program, define your measurements. It gives it a direct point in space. It doesn't allow it to wander. We can define things with one point. So this line is one point which we have defined. The line is out in space, has no length, and it has no direction. So we need to give it a length. And we need to give it a direction. So we're going to give it an angle in this case. Now, fully defined again. Well, what about if we didn't define it that way? So we're going to take away our front one. Take away this one. We just make this down for better sizing. 10 mil. 10 mil back our angle. Now, what if we wanted to make this line be defined? 
and we just wanted another point to define it. Click, click. That gives us 146.08, but it still didn't fully define because we have no angle and we have no length. So if we wanted to make one without a length, we can just define another the point from the other side. So as you can see, I have moved 10 and I have moved 10. I have moved in this and I've moved in this. So I told SOLIDWORKS this point and this point and the distance between them. I can go with an angle, the length, fully defined. Also tells it two points in between. Let's take it up a notch. Let's bring square. So I'm going to drop a rectangle. Perfect. Taking my length is 100 mil. My width is 75 mil. I want to define it. 100. 50. Fully defined. All you're doing is making sure that your sketches have wrote fully defined and underneath, and also that there's no question mark here. This is a rebuild command. Rebuild, there is no uh, mark, no rebuild, and no minus. The opposite of this is to overdefine. If we click and we say we want this one again to here, click that, leave the mention as driving, we have overdefined, rebuild, and we have a plus. We don't want a plus and we don't want a minus. So to undo that, we can just take away that measurement. There is an automatic one here and it is fully defined sketch. Do not use this because it will put in a lot more dimensions than is required to dimension a drawing. Make your system slow and make a mess of your drawing. If we drop a circle down, it's a dot, a point. We just need to go this way. Now, I am doing this with a line up and a line down. So a horizontal line and a vertical line. In everyday use, I do not use a horizontal and vertical line. But when I'm starting, when I was starting out to learn, I found it was very easy to learn how to define points in space when I had a horizontal and a vertical. Both have to sit in the origin and both have to be black. So both are fully defined. When you have those two lines, you can pretty much dimension any possible shape. So a circle dimension in the center point, both sides, and then you're dimensioning the diameter of the circle. It's another one. So it's a three point arc, so it can be anywhere. Uh, there. Okay, what are we looking to define on the arc? First one, major one is the actual radius. Then I'm picking a point on the end of the arc, one there, picking a point, go on to my horizontal line. Now I have one fully defined point. I have my radius of my arc, but to make my final fully defined point, I have a few options. I can do the very same thing here and here. So the odd, the very same as the, the line, I'm measuring the front, the back, holding the two points together. Do a chord be cross like that then our uh, height that tells us the length of the arc and where it stops to give us the angle this point here now if I do this point here it tells us how far it is up with the radius to the point but it doesn't tell us the length of the actual arc so we need to put a length in there as well to give us a fully defined. That's an arc. Last one we look at is pattern. So line, easy enough. Circle, easy enough. Ellipse, um, a slot. All those shapes are easy enough to define in this manner. So if we go for a linear pattern, just put a circle. And I'm saying that circle is 20 millimeters. I am then going to take my linear pattern, dropping down, selecting my circle, going back up, 
I'm going to turn it back, put it in there, push. And we go up, put another two, and we go up one more. There's all my points. I need to define this whole thing. Point, point. Point, point. Now, one piece defined. Center, center. See the way my centers are starting to get a little bit clustered, clustered up. So I can just jump back. Center, center. Center, center. Now that's that full stack because I've brought it back to the line. Now, the easier way of doing this would be to mark it out or put in a, a construction line and I'll lock all this in progress. But you could click, click, drop it that way as well. So that's going center to center as well. But all you're trying to do is define exactly what position everything is at. Like there's no great um, piece here with this. Like it's, where does this piece sit in space? See, that's defined there as a circular pattern. Let's draw a circle. Put in 100 millimeters. Break it as construction. We draw a small line or a small circle on top, say, 15, all blue, there's not one defined piece. Linear pattern, sketch pattern, take my center, take my center, and I'm going to pattern this piece. So we want say five, just to make it awkward. Now well, we have five circles. Now we want to take back from here to here. Well, we can put in our measurement whatever way we want. Back from here to here. Since my circle was defined, our measurement was defined, I now have the 100 mil radius. I have this circle measured. So I know, right, we have that center. We also have this center. So I'm going to put out that 47.55. Going to put out one up the way. Fully defined the whole sketch. Going to take off that one and I'm putting one down, cross over. Smart dimension, that one, 72, fully defined. So everything can be defined from these two lines. Those two lines act as the origin. So here's our origin, this point. Any sketch has an origin. You need to pin your lines back or your points back to that sketch to make it fully defined. Please fully define everything with SOLIDWORKS. The amount of sketches that you see that aren't fully defined, you should be able to fully define anything. See you next time.